We are afraid, knowing that everything that we learn, everything that we practice is that lesson. And so we say, welcome to our virtual family that is joining us on our Facebook page and also on our, and uh, the program, the service will be posted on our YouTube page also, on our YouTube channel. And so welcome to September, a new month, a new time of transition, and we're, we're beginning to transition into the fall. And I'm noticing it with the days beginning to get shorter. I'm having to reset the automatic timer on my light, my little lamp that I have in my living area to accommodate the, uh, the shortening of the days. And we begin a new theme this month, and that is reaching higher. And of course, our talk title for today, for the beginning of the month is reaching higher. I just wanna share with you, um, Yesterday, I spent the day up in Oakland with, um, with friends and colleagues. I uh, went to attend a memorial service for one of my classmates when I was going through ministerial school. Uh, made his transition earlier this year and the memorial was yesterday. And it was just a very lovely tribute to him and um, learned more things about him that I didn't already know when we were going through school. But one of the things that really stood out for me was that he was really the stabilizer. He was described as just a, a big example of love. And I remember on one of our ministerial retreats, I was having a little angst with one of my classmates and um, I decided on the retreat, I'm gonna put an end to this now. And I headed out like an unguided and uncontrolled ballistic missile to, to launch on this person and, and Reverend Jeff, Jeff Anderson is my colleague's name, is Reverend Jeff, just that very quiet presence followed me and we were out in an open area and just his presence calmed everything down and the missile and the Leo claws retracted and we were able to engage in a very peaceful and constructive conversation and out of that came resolution. So I was very grateful that that's one of the fond memories that I have of Jeff. Uh, and also it was a reminder that, um, that we're all connected, that we're all interconnected throughout this life. And that resilience is a part of the life. Resilience is a part of what we're gonna be looking at during the month of September and that is reaching higher. Um, I follow online um, and I'm gonna describe him as an Indian mystic. I don't know if he would describe himself as a mystic, uh, but it's Shad Guru. And I don't know if any of you have followed him or not, but he, this quote was recently on his page and I wanna share this because I felt that it tied in with our topic for today. And he says, make yourself in such a way that you are always part of the solution and not the problem. Make yourself in such a way that you are always part of the solution and not the problem. And so reaching higher from the perspective of science of mind reminds us that we are one and that we're interconnected and that we embody the unity and we live from a place of love. It's embodying unity that invites us to live from this place of love. And it's when we get confused about the world of effect that we become derailed and we get off track. And it's often as though we feel we are separated from God. Sometimes we'll, we'll say, you know, God left me. Or we might ask the question, why do I feel abandoned at this point in time or at this place where I am? And it's there where the judgments kick in and start making this distinction between good and evil, rather than focusing on the love and the good that is emerging from everything. As we reach higher, we also look back. And we look back not to dissect or to analyze whatever the experiences are that have shaped our lives. We look back and see that those lessons become part of our resilience 
and they become the steps. You know, think, think, think of a staircase. You ascend and you descend. You ascend and you descend. And so as we are raising higher, as, and as we are reaching higher, we're both raising higher and reaching higher, we find ourselves on this, this imaginary stairway that is setting forth our intentions and, it, and is pulling us. It's the vision that is pulling us to our higher goals, and we reach higher. We say yes to being constant with our spiritual practices. And our spiritual practices, being having a consistent spiritual practice allows us to grow and expand our understanding of the application of science of mind principles. So it's the expansion of our understanding of the principles that form our lives. We push past our comfort zone as we reach higher. And we know that the highest and best demonstrations emerge out of this place of love, genuine love for everyone. These tools open us to listening to our inner wisdom and guide us through our feelings of healing and grace. And of course, we do not do this in isolation. We are interconnected with all of life. And it is through our gatherings like this, uh, through the technology of social media, and through our gathering in spiritual community, through our gathering in classes or whatever other groupings we may find ourselves in, is that we feed off of each other. And this is where we gain our inspiration and our understanding. Sometimes though, sometimes our relationships become unsettled by unspoken thoughts and feelings. And we engage in what is identified as othering. Othering, O-T-H-E-R-I-N-G. And this word was very eloquently described by uh, Reverend Dr. Raymond Anderson, who is the contributor for the daily guides in this month's Science of Mind magazine. And so if you have not picked up a copy of the magazine, I invite you to do so. And this reading is from yesterday, September the 4th. And he writes, we other people based on age, size, skin color, political affiliation, their economics, their position or prestige or the physical traits and so much more. And this really resonated with me. This really resonated with me because it became that reminder to practice radical honesty with myself and to get in touch with those areas in my own daily walk where I other people, move them outside of that circle of love based on whatever the experience may have been or what I may have made up in my own head, which is not always totally accurate. And I found myself also in that place of comparison, uh, where I was comparing some, of, comparing some of the actions and practices in my former spiritual community with what my experience here in Monterey is. And I had to come to the realization that the experience in my former community was what was part of my growth. It was part of my expansion. It was part of my learning. And that I use that as a base for learning and not compare it to Monterey because Monterey is its own unique and specific and special community. And while we gather together under the umbrella of Centers for Spiritual Living, the personalities, the love, the experiences for each center is unique to that center. And so this was my wake up call to ask my own self and to remind myself when I find myself in that situation where I am othering. And this is a call for me to come back to myself and to ask what can I contribute and I offer the same invitation to those of us who are participating here this morning. Um, 
we ask ourselves the question in this arena of interconnectedness, knowing that all life is conspiring for us, not against us. It is always conspiring for us. We ask, what is mine to be and to do to include the collective good of the planet? And so in our interconnectedness, we are invited to move beyond self and to realize that we are part of a planetary and global family. And so what we do in one place impacts the entire planet in other places. As we reach higher, we may also find ourselves in that place of duality between past and future. As I was doing with my comparisons, comparing the past to the present, not really focusing on the future, but comparing the past to the present. Sometimes we focus on the past, projecting into the future and forget that we're right here, right now in present moment. And so I invite us to not get stuck there and get caught up in what some may identify as karma, and that is cause and effect. I am not a big proponent of karma. Um, it just is not something that resonates with, within me. However, when I was um, preparing for this talk, I came across this expression by Ernest Holmes from Creative Mind that, that gives a good context for me to have an, an understanding and appreciation of karma. Dr. Holmes writes, do you realize that your karma is nothing more than your false thinking and that the only way to escape this is to think the truth? And that brings with it the higher law. When the oldest enters, the youngest leaves because there is nothing to give him life. The past is gone when we learn to forgive and forget. We learn to forgive and forget. This reminds me of, um, of a sharing by one of my neighbors when I was growing up. Um, we had lived next door to each other in, in the state of Louisiana. And uh, this family moved to California before my family moved to California. And after they moved to California, um, there was a split. The husband uh, left the family and went and pursued other interests and uh, may have even started a, a, another separate new family. Well, at some point along life's journey, and, and this might be a great example of karma, some point along life's journey, um, the new person that the husband was with decided that there was no longer the connection. And he had become somewhat frail and was no longer able to work. And um, so he wanted to come back to uh, first wife. And their children convinced the mom to take him back. And the mom shared the story that she was in, uh, in a group session in the local church that she belonged to. And uh, she was saying that this was, this was a practice of forgiveness that she really was having difficulty embracing. And that was taking him back, providing a place for him and, and forgiving all that had transpired through these years. And one of the participants in, the, um, in, in this group session said to her, well, you know, we have to forgive and we have to forget. We have to forgive and forget. And she responded to the individual by saying, forgiving is bad enough, but forgetting, that's not happening. <laughs> and so that just reminded me of, of, you know, in this invitation to move out of this place of duality, we often have to forgive and forget. And, and, and forgetting, both forgiving and forgetting, is not the process of releasing someone from a wrong that has been committed. We're, we're not opening the door for them to come back into our lives and to continue to practice those same behaviors. 
What we're saying is that I am so much in tune with myself, the very essence of who I am as a being of spirit, that I can see that same essence and I can see that same beingness in you and there can be distance between us. Love is here, but there is the physical distance and there is the emotional distance that is between us. This can be a starting point. This can be a starting point. Rising higher requires us to stay in the present moment. And this is a constant way of living, to live in the present moment. And so out of all of this, what is our call to action? What is ours to be and to do? And we look to the evolutionary vision of our science of mind teachings. And I cite these following sections from the evolutionary vision. And it says, we see a world in which every person lives in alignment with their highest spiritual principle, emphasizing with God and connecting with each other, a world in which individually and collectively we are called to a higher state of consciousness and action. Here's, we're looking at this from a global perspective. We're interconnected. Each one individually and collectively is being called to a higher state of consciousness and action. And the other statement from our evolutionary vision is we envision humanity awakening to its spiritual magnificence and discovering the creative power of thought, a world where every person discovers their individual personal power and their ability to create an individual life that works within a world that works for everyone. Again, this is the interconnectedness. We are co-creating along with other life forms and along with source, along with God, along with, with creation, a world that works for everyone within a world that works for everyone. There's this interconnectedness. And we also look to the timeless wisdom principles from our science of mind teaching. And the ones I want to highlight this morning are oneness. The first one is oneness. The oneness, we recognize that there is one infinite reality. It is undivided. It is complete and it is whole within itself. And as we say in our Declaration of Principles or what we believe, we believe that this oneness creates everything out of itself. And it is not absorbed by its creation because it is both absolute and relative, tangible and intangible, physical and metaphysical, representing all aspects of reality. Our next principle that we look at is love and law. And here we remember that love is a self-givingness of the universal spirit, expressing itself in terms of creation. It is the impulse of the law that makes the way for creation love and law working together. Love is what propels the law into action. The law just says yes. When we give it, when we place a demand into the law, we must remember that we place that demand from a place of love, from a place of compassion, from a place of loving kindness, because the law says yes to whatever our request is. The next principle is in eternal life. We embrace the one infinite reality, which is eternal. We believe in the eternality and the immortality and the continuity of the individual soul that is forever and ever expanding. We're not static. We are forever and ever expanding. And we look to the creative process. And we know that this one infinite reality operates through this universal law of cause and effect. It is impersonal, it is automatic, it is intelligent, and it receives the direct impress of spirit's impulse 
it acts upon it, and it brings it into form. This is what the law does. It receives the direct impress of our thought. This is what Ernest Holmes wrote in What We Believe. This universal intelligence, this spirit, this one infinite reality receives the direct impress of our thought and acts upon it, and it brings it into form. And so when we live from the presence in the present, we live in that place of pure being in this present moment where only love exists. The past and the future can only exist in the present moment. It is always the present. To be able to inhabit the present moment without facing any issues. We learn to let go of that which seems to be an issue. We take it into our spiritual practice and we transmute it from a problem into an opportunity for love to express itself. And so our spiritual practice that I offer uh, for discussion or journaling, and I've asked our tech team to drop this into the uh, chat session for our Zoom audience and into the comment section for our Facebook Live family. Think of a current and a real situation that appears as a conflict in your life and ask, how can I rise higher? How can I rise higher thinking from love and asking, what is my role in this situation? Quite often we look outside and want to point that finger at someone else's responsibility for what is occurring in our lives. But when we step back and ask, what is my role in this? At least for me, I get so much more clarity when I ask, what is my role? And I, and I identify what my role is. And then I'm at a choice point. I can decide to change it. I can decide to do something differently. Or I can decide, you know, I'm really OK with this. I'm really OK with this. Thinking from love. We also ask, what is mine to be and do? Quite often we reverse those. We, we first go to what am I to do? The spirit invites us to be still. And that is where we listen to that indwelling voice within us. And we ask the question, what is mine to be and to do? And the next thing we ask about this current situation that is appearing as a conflict is, what am I to let go of for the resolution? What must I release? What must I put down? What fight must I put aside to bring about resolution? And, and, and resolution is not retribution. Let's be clear on that. Resolution is not retribution. Resolution is coming to a place of inner peace, knowing that of my own, I can do nothing. But as I surrender this to the indwelling spirit that is expressing itself through me, it all fades back into God. It all fades back into God. And then the final question that we may ask is, what else is spirit revealing to me in this moment? And these, my friends, are the basic steps of visioning. We always ask, what else is spirit revealing to me in this moment? And this is again, where we listen with the inner ear. And so our job, our call, is to be the place where God shows up. To be the place where God shows up. And our affirmation for this week is, I believe in myself because I believe in God. And I invite you to, uh, we'll do a little call and response. I will say that I will say the, a part and then you'll repeat it back to me. I believe, I believe in myself. I believe in myself. Because I believe in God. 
because I believe in God. Say that again. I believe, I in, believe myself. in myself. Because I believe, because I in, believe God. in God. And I invite us now to turn within as we pray together. And I begin from a place of gratitude. Gratitude for this present moment. For being alert and alive and imbued with the spirit of the indwelling presence in this very moment in this very room which is a room of my consciousness i know that the all-prevailing presence of spirit is absolutely all that there is that it is always a presence and never an absence and as i identify myself with this presence i know that it is the presence that is reflecting back to me as I look out and I see the faces of the beloveds that are here in our physical space, as I see the face of the beloveds that are a part of our Zoom community, and as I see the face of the beloved as I walk out the door and engage with other expressions of life, knowing that there is only one life. And that life is whole, it is perfect, it is complete. And so I affirm and declare that in this perfection of life, as I live, move, and have my being, everything is unfolding in divine, right, and perfect order. And that is an expression that sometimes can feel like a cliche. Everything is in divine, right, and perfect order. And yet, as we step back, and reflect on our own individual lives, I believe that we can say everything is unfolding in divine, right, and perfect order. I may not like the way that it is unfolding. It may not be unfolding in the order in which I would arrange it. And yet, as I be still, as I be still, and as I listen with the inner ear, with the ear of discernment, I know that everything is out picturing for my highest good and for the highest and best good of everyone that is involved. And so I speak my word of blessing this morning for spiritual communities and places where people are gathering, whether it is on a Sunday or a Monday or a Tuesday or whenever and wherever they are gathering, recognizing that there are many paths, that there are many roads that lead back to source, and that each and every person is on their road, on their own individual journey of awakening. And so I bless each community where two or more are gathering in the name of love, in the name of the one life, in the name of the one power, recognizing that where two or more are gathered in my name, as the master teacher says, there I am in their presence. And the I am presence is that which indwells within each and every one of us. I speak my word this morning in gratitude for the surprises in life that bring joy and bring laughter and bring a smile to our face, bring a smile to our hearts. And I also bless each one who is going through an experience that is perhaps bringing a tear. And that, kid, that tear can be a tear of sadness, that tear can be a tear of joy. Whatever it is that is bringing that tear, be with it. Allow what is willing to come up to be released and to be expressed because it is in, in the release that the healing takes place. For each one that is experiencing a transition in their life, the transition of a loved one, the physical absence, the physical transition of the body moving back into its original form, that which we say goodbye to. Transition of other life experiences that 
are ready to be released and to move on to yet another expression. We let them go with love. We bless them. We bless them on that journey. For each one that is seeking right livelihood, that is seeking right living accommodations, that is seeking whatever the desire of the heart is, I know that the spirit, the law is saying yes. And so we make our request known. We make our request known in love. And the law simply says yes. And for this and so much more, I am eternally grateful as I release this word, as I release this prayer into the law, knowing that it is done, I just allow it to be so. And together we affirm this by saying, and so it is. And so it is. And now it is our opportunity to participate in the law of circulation. And I am so deeply grateful. And I say this every Sunday, um, not from a place of rote, but from a place of deep, deep gratitude and deep, deep love, how through your consciousness and practice of abundance, lovingly support the spiritual community so that we can continue to do our work in the world. And so we have an abundance statement that I invite you to share with me now. I recognize the presence of God within as the source of my abundance. Out of my abundance consciousness flows everything I could desire in life. With gratitude and thanksgiving, I now participate in the flow of uninterrupted abundance. I release this visible substance as an outer symbol of my inner supply into the physical world. This prosperous experience is evidence of my abundance consciousness. And we have placed on the screen an opportunity for you to contribute to the center by mailing in a check or making a secure donation to our website, or you may text to give. And so thank you to all who are in our virtual community for being a part of us this morning. And I invite you to return next week as we continue our topic, Reaching Higher. And the topic will be Transcend and Include. And so we bless you, we thank God for you, and we love you.